Hello and welcome to Shiksha.com. I am Deepak Singh with you. Today I am standing in the Earthquake Engineering Department of IIT Roorkee and with me is the head of the department, Professor Manish Rikhande. Uh, Manish Ji, you are very welcome to your Shiksha.com. Thank you. Sir, my question to you is because it's one of the noble departments of IIT Roorkee, but it's not seen anywhere else in any other IITs. Yes. Uh, please just highlight the kind of the work being done in the department here. What kind of excellence is being created here? First of all, uh, thank you for uh, bringing up uh, earthquake engineering in focus. It has been a very uh, misunderstood uh, uh, topic. I mean, I mean, on a lighter note, sometimes people ask me whether we engineer earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> so we do not engineer earthquakes, but we engineer for earthquakes. So there are multiple angles to that, and uh, first and foremost is what kind of earthquake do we design for as so so my, my, my you know, i'll just add one question are you designing the solutions to the problems created by the earthquake or you de are you designing solutions to the problem of earthquake we are designing solutions for earth withstanding earthquakes okay. such that no problems should arise okay I mean, problems arise only when our infrastructure system or the uh, whatever systems we have in our uh, normal life that we uh, come to take it for granted, functional systems, they start uh, misbehaving or not functioning properly after the earthquake. So our objective of imparting training or developing these programs, academic programs in earthquake engineering is to uh, ensure that if the systems receive proper attention and detail during their planning and design, then such unfortunate incidences should never occur. Is there any new achievement which you would like to highlight? Several. I mean, it's a continuous phase and uh, we keep on evolving with the current trends and uh, current uh, requirements of the profession. and. Uh, <clears throat> We keep on innovating, but uh, those innovations uh, take time. They, it has a natural gestation period and uh, confidence building. I mean, something it is easier to demonstrate in the laboratory scale, but taking it up uh, for practical application in the field, it requires participation of several different uh, agencies. When you say earthquake, you think about big land, huge, uh, huge parcels of land, high-rise buildings. So the labs must be equivalent to the stature of the subject. Very interesting uh, point of view and uh, it uh, brings to the focus the importance and also the limitation of uh, laboratory scale testing. In laboratory, because uh, we are limited by the capacity of our equipment and the physical space that is available, so the size of the specimen that we construct is limited. The amount or the kind of uh, force that we can exert is also limited. But the basic principles of uh, design and performance during uh, uh, how a particular system will perform during an earthquake, that we can study and uh, from there general inferences can be drawn which can translate to large scale systems. Place we are standing. Yes. Is this a part of your laboratory? What does what is this place about? Please uh, just explain about. Look, it. yes, this is a, <clears throat> a very interesting uh, facility. I would say I take uh, great pride in this facility. This was our first large scale test facility, and I call it as art from junk. These uh, railway tracks and wagons they had been uh, condemned by Indian Railways. And we requested them to deploy this uh, on the uh, in our lab. If you look at it, there is a ramp on the track there. Okay. It's a 15 degree ramp. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> this wagon is very heavy. It weighs about uh, 27 tons to 30 tons. Depends on the moisture content of the sand. sand. And, and is it being intentionally done to make yes, it yes, heavy? Yes, yes, yes. And similarly, you can see the other wagon that is also similarly he heavy, 27 to 30 ton. And there is a ramp that side as well. Okay. 
So what is, and this platform here, here we create these, uh, this is the specimen that you can see, test specimen uh, to be tested for earthquakes. I mean, earthquake is essentially a load in horizontal plane. And that is what distinguishes earthquake resistant design from normal civil engineering design. I mean, gravity load design is uh, comes naturally. As long as the material doesn't crush under its own weight, the material would sustain. But the moment, I mean, the real engineering comes when the force that is coming in horizontal direction, horizontal plane, that has to be withstood by vertical members to transfer it safely to the foundation. So that is where earthquake engineering actually comes into picture. Okay. So what we do here is we pull this wagon up the ramp there. Okay. Okay. Using, so this will be pulled there. This will be pulled up there. Okay. And uh, there are gradation marks. I mean, uh, our uh, on the uh, track. So th those are our calibration marks, uh, which measure. which uh, we already have calibrated that uh, what kind of uh, impact we want to produce. Okay. So what happens is this wagon is then released from the top. I mean, the, from that ramp comes rolling down, okay. and it hits this middle wagon. Okay. So acceleration may not be very large, but mass is very heavy. So mass times acceleration is the horizontal force that is imparted oh. on this platform and that goes, uh, oh. that is subjected to the okay. uh, <coughs> specimen, the above this specimen yeah. that is mounted on this. Okay. And then this platform rolls, hits that wagon. Okay. That wagon goes up the ramp okay. because of this impact. Then it comes rolling down again, hits this again. Okay. So this dham, 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 dham continues. And that is, I would say, a very first order approximation of random pulses in time. I mean, these impacts that are happening, those are happening at different time instants. So that is like earthquake pulse. Dum, 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 dum. So what does that give you? So that allows me to test the horizontal, I mean, how a specimen would perform during an earthquake. The kind of uh, uh, shock that we generate here, it's much, much more uh, severe than any earthquake that I have seen so For a far. specimen level, especially. Oh, that, I have not seen any earthquake uh, which would okay. uh, which would uh, be able to exert that kind of force. Okay. So far, I have not seen any such earthquake. Uh, now, a bit about the academics here. What kind of uh, um, uh, curriculum you have here for the students who want to pursue uh, earthquake engineering? We have our, uh, I mean, uh, master's program in three disciplines. One is uh, for uh, geotechnical earthquake engineering or soil dynamics as we have the name of the degree. But And uh, second one is uh, structural dynamics that uh, deals with structural engineering issues subjected to dynamic loading. And third one is seismic vulnerability and risk assessment. So that has a flavor of uh, assessment of risk and uh, what is the risk of uh, hazard coming from uh, due to an earthquake hazard and what is the uh, implication for its uh, loss and uh, uh, rebuilding and so on. So that has some inputs, important inputs, and these models are very important inputs for insurance, earthquake insurance and loss uh, insurance. I mean, taking care of losses due to insurance. What kind of prospects does this department offer to students? World over, we have seen population is growing. The space is limited. So the only way to go or expand is vertically. And the moment you go vertically upwards, uh, the dynamic behavior becomes very, very important. And th that is not, uh, as I explained a little while back, that is very different or not so, uh, I would say, intuitive to uh, thinking in terms of just static loading. And if it comes to select, selecting between civil engineering, masters in civil engineering, yes, and masters in earthquake engineering, yes, uh, what accordingly? Why accordingly? Uh, you know, according to you, a student should choose earthquake engineering than civil engineering. Precisely because uh, what I just mentioned. But this uh, is also the, covered in civil engineering as well, right? Not to the uh, same extent. They have only uh, one course or one odd course which talks about. Uh, just structural portion, I mean, uh, structural analysis for dynamic effects, that is all, right? But uh, there are many things which uh, 
need to be uh, considered. I mean, I mean that is one, only one part of uh, studying dynamic behavior, but then uh, dynamic response calculation or mathematical modeling about how to calculate the dynamic response. But then when we look at the actual engineering, we also need to look at how the material uh, behaves. I mean, the material behavior is also different in static conditions and dynamic conditions. And that behavior also needs to be accounted for uh, when designing for dynamic effects. Okay. Right. So it's much more uh, comprehensive and much more involved thing. And uh, I don't think uh, uh, justice, enough justice can be done, proper justice can be done with just one course. And are there enough uh, job profiles available for students of earthquake engineering in private sectors? Yes, mostly in design consultancy. Okay. So as I mentioned, I mean, all over the world, uh, the trend is towards uh, high rise uh, buildings and dynamics is an important aspect. And when it comes to placement, what percentage of the batch gets placed here? Oh, our placement uh, statistics are very good. Okay. Very, I mean, above normal, above average in the institute. And this but year, what kind of profiles they go on to? What kind of job roles they have? They get? Mostly they go to core. Okay. I mean, design core consultancy, as I said, okay. design offices. If a student wants to pers pursue earthquake engineering from IIT Roorkee, yes. is there a, another way to enter or gate is the only way? Gate is the only way. Okay. I mean, for uh, regular students, gate is the only way. Otherwise, there are uh, uh, channels available for sponsored candidates. I mean, with certain number of uh, experience and uh, certain uh, there are eligibility requirement for the sponsoring agencies who can sponsor. And are there scholarships available as well? For sponsored candidates? No, no. not for general candidates. No, for the regular candidates, of course, that's a fully, uh, they are covered by the institute fellowships, institute assistantships. Okay. And what is, what amount is that right now? I think it is... Uh, 31,000 or so. Okay. It was wonderful interacting with you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <clears throat> Please this video ko like share zarur kijiyega aur channel ko subscribe karna bilkul mat bhuliyega. Thanks for watching.